guys! Welcome back to Not Just Make Guys. Marco here, and today we work using the magical properties of oil paints. Most of the time a title like this is just an effective clickbait, but what if this time is actually true? My very first video on YouTube is about oil paints, and since the beginning I use them almost constantly for weathering and to create a quick definition and extra shades in speed painting, but I made only one video where I paint a model from start to finish with oils, and that was almost one year ago. Well, this madness ends here. I painted the shaman in about 3 hours with brushes and oil paints, using only a very simple and beginner friendly approach, that in terms of complexity I'm not afraid to compare to the basic based on wash edge highlight of acrylics, but I think the result speaks for himself about the difference in efficiency of the two processes. I'm not trying to sell you anything, you know that I like to combine the two techniques, and I'm deeply conscious of the merits and limits of both kinds of paint, but oils have been out of the spotlight for too long, and I really want to help their recent comeback to mainstream miniature painting, because as always is a matter of adding more options, and as you'll see, oils are a great option! Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to always know what happens on the channel, and if you want to support my work, like, comment, share, watch another video, and maybe check my Patreon page, where you can find the real-time footage of my videos, with every single little line and brushstroke. Thanks a million, guys! If you want to try oil paints, you don't need any particular precaution in the preparation stage, and you can prime your models like you always do, without changing a thing. I prime with the same black you have seen me using dozens of times, and I do my usual zenithal light with white ink, like you have seen me doing dozens of times. Nothing changes here. You can easily start painting over a simple full white primer, but I think that a zenithal light is a more beginner friendly starting point, because you get a clear map of the volumes that you have to create later anyway, and in general underpainting techniques are an integral part of oil painting. Another beginner friendly but absolutely non mandatory step is to fix a couple of base tones with acrylics, and the tool you choose for this step doesn't really matter. The objective is only to have a few colors on the surface, to limit a bit the volume of oil paint you'll need later to obtain the opacity we are used to, and we naturally look for. So you can use uh, standard acrylics or inks, contrast paints and similar products, just choose the paint you are most uh, comfortable with uh, to get a quick, simple light based on, on the parts where you feel the need of a more opaque uh, starting point. As you can see, nothing fancy or complicated here, even in terms of visual output. Before moving to oils, I want to reveal the two key foundational ideas that you have to keep in mind throughout this video, and all your future work with oil paints. First revelation. In almost every aspect, oils are acrylics in reverse. This is obviously an oversimplification, but when in doubt, this loose concept can save you a lot of trouble. They dry slowly, light colors are more opaque than dark colors, thick paint is better for large blendings, and diluted paint is better for sharp details, and so on. Second revelation. This. This is a powerful mental image for oil paint's behavior. Because more or less everything revolves precisely around this, the direct application of thick paint and its spreading, and even the actual movements of the brush are quite similar. I want to jump into the real work, and I don't want to talk too much about materials here, so if you need to know more about what you need on the table to start painting in this way, and how this medium and its tools work in general, start from this super comprehensive video up here. The only updates I made to my setup since that video are moving from a glass palette to cheap paper disposable palettes that make cleaning much easier, and upgrade my palette cap to a version with lids, a little thing that makes a lot of sense considering the long life of the palette itself, so I can keep the same tools and materials on the table for days without moving or cleaning anything. In this stage, my palette is entirely made by deep dark colors, and I'm going to use them to set my deeper shadows and all my dark definition from the very beginning. 
they came on the pallet directly from the tubes, without any extra preparation, and I used just a teeny tiny bit of white spirit to thin them down, where I feel that the consistency is a bit too dense. But it's not so uncommon for me to use the softer ones straight from the tubes, especially in the advanced stages. The true objective of this step is to envelop the model in a general coat of oily medium, that will improve the grab of the next layers of paint like a sort of wet primer, making every part of the model an active and reactive surface, where the colors can move with a proper wet-on-wet -wet behavior, and the brush can slide on the oily medium like a skater on ice. More old-school painters tend to do this step using a uniform color almost identical in value and tone to the one used for the acrylic base, to start painting with the same mid-tone but with the oil's properties. But as you know, I'm obsessed with efficiency, and I like to obtain as much as I can from a single step. I want to be super clear, I didn't invent anything here. Oil painting, especially on display and competition models, is a real thing around the world, in Italy in particular, and I've been super lucky to learn about its use from true masters of this medium. But, uh, like every real wizard, they are often a bit shy, and sometimes uh, secretive in their ways. I was uh, really surprised when I discovered the work of James Wapple, and how much we streamlined some steps in a very similar way, especially when painting gaming models. James is for sure the most active of us in teaching and spreading the oil's way, so check the links in the description to find a ton of extra great, super informative content about this topic. Again, I want to keep this video very beginner friendly, so I don't want to stress you too much with color theory and the crazy interactions you can trigger with this step. We'll get there, don't worry. So here I simply use a dark green for the green skin, in reality I couldn't resist adding a bit of violet around fingers, knees and elbows, a dark blue for the bluish cape, and dark browns for wooden bones. And since I want a colorful flow of tones on the magic smoke, I put in sequence red, magenta, violet, blue and green on top. I know, this seems a mess now, but watch this. Like I usually do with oil washes, I use uh, makeup sponges and q-tips to remove the excess of paint from every open surface, but leaving a ton of wet, active paint inside the details. As a bonus, thanks to the thick consistency of the colors and their heavy load of pigments over a matte, porous and receptive acrylic surface, everything remains stained by a nice, transparent base tone perfect for that area. Even if uh, you remove most of the paint, everything is still covered by a thin oily layer, because uh, you can't simply take off everything of that kind of substance simply rubbing without a solvent chemically acting on it. Anyway, like working on washes, be gentle in this stage. You are moving wet paint that doesn't really fight or resist you, and you have only a couple of acrylic layers enduring all this external physical stress. Here you can see the small number of consumables I used, and my bad management of the sponge's surface. Usually I just use a couple of q-tips for the most hidden spots, but here I needed few more because of the strong undercuts of this model. Let's be honest, this is already quite interesting. All the preparation is done, and we can move to the fun part. I add to the palette my lighter tones, setting the entire pool of colors I'll use until the end and I finally start painting in a more classic way. I have a couple of pointy brushes for mixing and the application of paint, and few blending brushes in different sizes and shapes that will remain dead dry for the entire process, without ever touching the thinner. White Spirit is a powerful solvent for oils, much more powerful than water for acrylics, so I use it only in minimal, microscopic quantities to adjust a bit the consistency of the thicker colors on the palette, and to clean the application brushes when I need to jump between extremely different tones, that's all. With experience and more uh, general control, you'll start using often the same brush, both for application and blending, but if you are a beginner, start with the super strict two brushes technique. 
This uh, little thing will make your life incredibly easier. And uh, you can thank me later. <laughs> to clean the blending brushes, I simply rub them on a piece of paper towel. This is uh, more than enough to remove the meaningful excess of paint, keeping them dry. Remember, these are not acrylics, and using paint with a good density and thickness is the core of this technique. Despite all these recommendations, the actual work is the simplest and most uh, straightforward you can think of. You take the paint from the palette, you slap it without any crazy precision where needed, and you blend it on the surface, or directly with the other colors of the gradient you want to create. There's no need for multiple overlapped layers to fake a gentle progression, and you don't need to glaze dozens of thin transparent layers to obtain smoothness. Gradients and flowing colors come from gently spreading around the initial blob of paint. Remember, always keep bread and butter in mind. Thanks to the previous steps, I've already in place the darkest shadows, that contain a ton of interesting colors, and the dark definition they create. So here I need only to quote unquote color inside the borders, and every time a new color gets near those shadows, it naturally blends with the wet paint, creating a gentle progression from light to mid-tones and shadows. The blending brush is your main weapon the tool that makes uh, all the real work. You can uh, gently dab it to blend the paint on the spot, or use uh, long brush strokes to spread it with a precise vector, but uh, remember that uh, to better control the blending process, the pressure you apply is a bit more important than shape and direction of the brush strokes. A secondary but uh, not less important work that the blending brush does for you with this movement is to fix the texture and the finish of the paint. I'm using a thick paint that easily catches the shape of bristles and brush strokes, and while blending I can easily erase those marks. Plus, using the dubbing motion I create in a microscopic level the texture of matte paint, that's why even on screen you can see that the model is never really shiny or glossy, and thanks to this everything will dry quite matte. Usually I talk more about the colors I'm using and their relation, but as you can see I'm working with basic hues and simple mixes, because the real complex interactions happen directly on the model. I believe that in this case the most important part to deliver is in the brush strokes, the flow of the work and its stages. I must be honest with you, if you are a beginner miniature painter in general, you'll not face huge problems adapting to this workflow. But if you are coming from years and years of acrylics and uh, traditional wargaming techniques, uh, well, your first experiments are going to be tough, because again, all your world will go upside down. The good thing is that, uh, thanks to your experience with brush and paints in general, your learning curve will be extremely steep, and you'll find yourself giggling at the table and asking, uh, why the hell don't I always paint like this? This is happening to me, right now. I want you also to be aware that everything you see here is just an atom, not even a molecule of the tip of the huge iceberg that is oil painting, and of course there is a lot of my personal way of understanding and using the medium. Oils have been around for literally 1000 years, even today they are still one of the most used artist mediums, and they are still made almost in the same way, and I think this gives you a good idea of why they are considered the pinnacle of what paint can do. If you think about it in modern, advanced miniature painting, the trend is to imitate their behavior with acrylics. Zenithal lights and all the underpainting techniques, the wet on wet method, the sketch and blend approach, a lot of things we do with the airbrush, or even some of our basic tools like mediums, flow improvers, and even the wet palette. All the needs that uh, these tools and techniques uh, try to satisfy are easily covered by the basic properties of oils. 
Again, we come from a strange perspective where acrylics are the center of the universe, but they have been invented only 70 years ago, and even if uh, they are functional for what we do, if uh, we want to be called painters, I think we should know better what is around us. I put a lot of emphasis on large, smooth blends, because uh, that is what is perceived as a difficult part of brush painting in acrylics, but oils can also easily cover textures and sharp details. We'll talk better about these in future videos, but painting textures with oils is quite easy, because uh, thanks to the natural thickness of the paint, you can quickly set the rough pattern of the texture on the model, and then blend its impact and visibility as you need. You can make it more subtle and transparent with more passes of the blending brush, or sharper and easily visible with just a couple of super light touches, and obviously you can combine both in multiple steps to create a deeper and even more realistic effect. Painting uh, sharp lines and edge highlights, I simply add much more thinner to my paint, reaching the consistency of a fluid acrylic, something in between a well shaken dropper bottle and contrast paint. The flow of the brush loaded with diluted oil paint over the active surface is incredibly smooth and precise, and the lines get a natural gradient mixing a bit with the tones and values you have already on the surface, making the edge highlights more harmonious with the area of application. As a final note, I know you are worrying about the drying time, but really, don't! Oils dry slowly, that's true, but the idea that this takes uh, weeks or months is true only for canvases, where it's often used a crazy mass of paint, like entire tubes sometimes. With an application like the one I used here, the model will be completely dry in no more than a couple of days, and if you follow the link up here, you can discover how the process works and how you can speed it up. And here is the final result. This took me about 3 hours, and I can't stress enough how easy it's been to arrive here. I want also to point out that I always use the time I needed to complete a project, not to brag about my speed or because I value speed in a particular way, but because I consider obtaining a good looking model in a short time synonymous of a conscious efficiency and an easy, effective process. Again, the more I paint, the more I feel the need of this kind of properties to create what I have in mind, and sometimes instead of doing a million tricks with acrylics to obtain that, I feel it's easier to just uh, change the medium. I hope you enjoyed this updated version of my gateway to oil painting, and I can't wait to go more and more in depth into the topic, because there's still so much to say! If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe! Remember that you can ask me anything down below with a comment, and you can follow my projects during the week using one of my socials. And if you want to support my work, check my Patreon page and join the community, or maybe ask for a commission. See you next week, guys!